Hey y'all, I'm starting to read this book all about love by Bell Hooks as a part of a book club, so hopefully I can stay on track. The intro starts with Bell Hooks saying that they were doing a lot of research and they were trying to figure out all this stuff about love and they realized that a lot of men were talking about love. However, the men kept structuring their talks to emphasize that gender roles are really important. But if gender roles are so important, then why are we seeing so many more men publish about love? Gender roles would say that love is closer to being emotional or being an emotion, aka feminine, but we're not seeing women being published about love at the same rate. Basically, Bell Hooks says this book is about how we can revamp love in our everyday life and our everyday culture. All right, chapter one. Chapter one seems to be about how a lot of people don't really have a shared definition or understanding of love. And so like we're operating like, oh, you're gonna figure it out from like your parents or your family or your early relationships when it's like, but if they don't know what they're doing. How are they supposed to teach me properly what I'm doing? And so we just gonna keep being confused. He said, let's try to get it together. And this is the, what they offered, quotes. To truly love, we must learn to mix various ingredients, care, affection, recognition, respect, commitment, and trust, as well as honest and open communication. And quote. Sometimes we confuse love with thinking about someone or like really considering someone. And it's like, we need to just treat love like an action. It's not just a feeling or a noun or whatever. If we really want to work on it and be about it, it needs to be what we do. All right, chapter two is about how we teach children love and how children learn love. Hooks is noticing that parents who were abused are usually repeating that same pattern and following that same model because that's what worked for them. Um, but really it's like, have you really thought about how this affected you? Also, if we were having this same conversation about two adults like abusing each other or hitting each other or pinching each other because like they're not listening, then you would acknowledge that this is a problem. But because it's kids, they don't have any rights, they should just deal with it. Hooks is like, if we have a discussion or we start talking about better understanding love, we can try better things. Hooks also brought up TV shows as family examples. Like they could be doing a little better because sometimes they're unrealistic and corny, like the kids are mad well-mannered. But notice that there are multiple adults to mediate for the kids. Like try to do something different, think different. Chapter three is about honesty. Hooks talks about how as children we're taught that we should be honest by our parents. However, we learn that they're not always honest themselves and that they lie or withhold the truth based on like what they're trying to get and kids start learning how to do that for themselves, lying and withholding the truth just to like get away from punishments or like get a, like manipulate a feeling out of an adult or something like that. As these kids grow up, they're socialized into stereotypes of like what it means to be a man or a woman or manly or feminine or other things, just like all of these things create a fake personality that they kind of learn to lie to be. Hooks uses a lot of references. Altenberg says justice is what breaks us out of this whole like set of lies. Just wanting justice and caring about others more than the lies. All in all, love is on. Chapter four is about commitment, yo. This chapter, we're really talking about how self-love is key. Hooks is telling us people need to not think or not encourage that self-love is just gonna be something that you just figure out for yourself or by yourself um because like we're not always taught how to do that and we're also fighting with being taught how to like dislike ourselves or be ashamed of ourselves a lot of that comes from media and um, just shame from like punishments or humiliation quote when we see love as a combination of trust, commitment, care, respect, knowledge, and responsibility, we can work on developing these qualities or if they are already a part of who we are, we can learn to extend them to ourselves. If we commit to practices that develop these things in ourselves, we can extend it to others as well. Chapter 5, Spirituality. Hooks explains that with the lack of love in our society, a lot of people try to build that lack with consumerism however your spirit is still going to notice that lack and so most likely you'll also turn to spirituality 
which has been adjusted to fit our general consumerist like culture when diving into spirituality or a lot of religions it's notable that um a main theme is love like god is love or their god is love or people are love or you need to love people or love each other each other etc so spirituality is another me method of like understanding love however that requires a spiritual awakening your spirituality connects how you live with your principles and values and that plays into all the chapters we've read so far chapter six values we start this chapter talking about how people are not living their everyday lives in accordance with their values or the values they believe they hold. The example that Hooks gives is that you can talk to everyone in this country about how um, domestic violence is a problem and they don't support it. However, if you say we can handle domestic violence by um, approaching the patriarchy or attacking the patriarchy, then that's when they start like disagreeing with you and that could be due to a fear of taking the action that's needed in order to live your life true to those values love doesn't have any space for fear because love is about finding connection and finding yourself in others most of our society that has been built off of oppression thrives off of fear and violence choosing love is a call to act on your values Chapter 7, Greed. Hook says that America might have had a good idea at love back around the 70s. That idea was kind of dropped when wars such as like the Vietnam War showed that profit is more important than spreading love and democracy. Um, profit is more important than people's lives. <laughs> Alongside corrupt politics, there were also assassinations of activists. Since people died at war, there were more jobs and it became easier to just think about materialism and instant gratification than the hard work and time and effort and all of that that comes from like love and really caring. To avoid greed, Hook suggests that we live simply, we avoid hoarding, we avoid like feeding our insecurities, we consider like other people and their needs. Hook suggests using our everyday actions to care about others and care about our community. Chapter 8, Loving Community Community sustains life by offering diverse examples of what does and doesn't work when it comes to love and different types of relationships. In the last chapter, we learned that through the 60s, 70s, and 80s, America moved away from community-based loving by basically politically showing that profit, economics, war, um, things like that were more important than social justice or love or peace or spreading democracy, etc. This moved us towards prioritizing the in-home nuclear family and we kind of just uh, emphasize the obligation to it instead of the obligation to ourself. Hooks points out that when moving towards community, we often mishandle loneliness and forgiveness. Loneliness in a way where we seek comfort out of communities, therefore draining the community instead of developing our comfort within ourselves first. And forgiveness allows for mutual respect, understanding, and growth. Chapter 9, Mutuality. People go into relationships looking for love that's like the caretaking they received from their family, which included teaching or emotional work without necessarily expecting anything in return. If both people are lost and looking for this, then it's probably not going to work out. People also accept behavior like lying and insults and abuse from peers that they would not accept from children. From recent equality movements, we're learning that people don't have to grow up into these gendered roles, but that also equals some people avoiding growing up in general and still expecting others to meet their needs. For those people who want to know love, either because they've been hurt by it or never experienced it, they need to start acting out and operating like the love that they want to see. Another big step is honest communication. So being honest with your truth and being able to listen well for your needs and the needs of others. It can be painful to rebuild your notions of love, but it's better to be for a benefit than for nonsense. Chapter 10, Romance. Hooks basically defines romance as the idea a person has about what an intimate partnership would look like for them. That basically leaves a lot of room for mystery, which people like, they're like excited by, and it adds the idea of falling in love instead of like choosing this. 
some people use erotic or sexual attraction as a reason for for like seeing some romantic view of someone and that doesn't equate to love all of this is also clouded in a lack of communication hooks suggests that we enhance romance by truly knowing each other because then we can know what actually excites each other and get rid of the possibility of en encountering something that actually triggers us or makes us anxious. We can find deep, full romance within true love where we know each other, support each other, and communicate with each other. Chapter 11, Lost. We start by talking about how we're kind of addicted to death as a society because it's guaranteed to each of us. We think that the way it's a part of everyday media makes us more okay with it, but we're not thinking about how much it adds to our anxiety about it. We can't embrace love at the same time that we're obsessed with death. We can't be open to sharing ourselves and sharing loving experiences if we're always preoccupied with the idea that anyone could hurt us or contribute to us dying at any time for any reason in any way, etc. The suggestion is that we embrace true love and we embrace change. When we embrace true love, we embrace who we really are and what we really want and how we really want to live and we respect that and we try to live to our fullest. When we embrace change, we embrace that we can respect our love or the love we have in different forms. When death and loss, including breakups, come around, we can at least respect our love because it was true. Chapter 12, Healing. Often when people are traumatized from dysfunctional situations, they repeat cycles of acting out. When they're ready for something to be different, it's up to them to choose to try something else. Western culture encourages individualism. However, through healthy interdependency, we can build together, be open to more variety in life, and be held accountable to show up for our own growth and possibly the growth of others. When we make the choice to be changed and healed by love, we are starting the process of being self-reflective. And we can start choosing forgiveness and compassion instead of judgment. Judgment acts as a separator of people because it lacks understanding and it encourages shame. Forgiveness breaks down shame and allows us to create room for honesty and trust. Compassion brings us to love because we can see the ways that ourselves and others are struggling and extend love for healing and growth. People want power to conquer fear, but will always yearn for love. Chapter 13, Destiny. It's important for people to develop healthy boundaries in their loving relationships. Hooks points out that this often starts with relationships with people's parents. People often turn towards spiritual comforts to feed their yearning, to be cared for, loved, and supported through their struggle and growth. When going out to find love, a lot of people think that finding love is going to take care of a lot of their problems. Love helps us as an additional tool to support us dealing with problems like praying, meditating, journaling, therapy, etc. All right. Hook sums it up as love is a powerful tool to support the process of growth. The process of growth is being described to look like reconciling with the past, removing the shame out of it, seeing accountability on all sides of what happened, and finding the meaning for yourself in it. That's a wrap, y'all. Thank you at Gary Talks for Book Club 2021.